Welcome everyone to this Photoshop tutorial. My name is Chris and this is going to be a basics tutorial. So um, a lot of these tools are going to be used in the future in some of my more advanced tutorials, but uh, basically you're going to learn the basics. So um, just an overview, we're going to be going over the Photoshop workspace. So the interface that you're going to be working with. Um, we're going to go over some essential tools such as the buttons on the left, the toolbar, um, and just some of the panels that are going to be used. We're going to be creating basic images and shapes. We're going to be working with pre-existing images and text. And then we're also going to be applying some filters, some effects, and some color correction. Um, like I said, there will be more advanced tutorials that are geared more and more focused on specific topics and different features that can be used to accomplish various different things. So um, let's go ahead and get into it. I'm gonna go ahead and open up Photoshop and this is CS6. Um, there'll be a link in the description to get Photoshop if you don't have it already. So go ahead and check that out. Also subscribe if you are wanting to check out more of my videos in the future and wanna come back and view this in the future. Um, so yeah, go ahead and do that and rate this uh, thumbs up as well if you can. Any support is greatly appreciated. So um, to start with, we're going to be going to, uh, basically we're going to look at the, the layout here. So you'll notice on the left hand side you've got all your tools, brushes, and all kinds of stuff. You probably don't know what everything does yet. Um, I'm not going to be going over every little brush, but I'll try to, uh, every little tool, but I'm going to try to go over as much as possible in this short amount of time we have. Um, you'll notice over on the right hand side, we've got our layering panel, we've got an adjustment panel, and also a color panel. Um, basically, if you want to start out with the essentials like I'm, s I, like you're seeing here on my screen, um, you'll keep your preset your, your theme preset here on essentials. Um, you do have the ability to change this if you are wanting to paint. Um, you'll have more option to your, for your options for brushes and um, your color swatch is right up there. Um, you're still gonna have your layer panel here because that's one of the most essential things in Photoshop is the layering panel and we'll go over that here shortly. Um, you also have the ability to use a typography um, layout and that's going to give you more options for um, adjusting and, uh, and giving different options to your text when, when typing things out. So if you've got say an advertisement with um, a lot of text on it you'll have a lot of features for um, editing that text. But uh, for the tutorial here we're just going to basically go over the essentials layout. Um, oh also if we go to edit preferences and interface you can change the color of the theme so if that uh, dark layout is too dark on your and doesn't work for your eyes you can change it to a more light layout um, in my opinion I like the uh, darker layout I think it just uh, makes it easier to work with um, the light layout just kind of reminds me of like a I don't know, like an older program, so I'll stick with the uh, this one here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK and get back to where we were. Um, so you, like I said, you do have the ability to change this layout or, or even move some of these panels around if you don't like the way they're laid out. Um, you can expand and, and uh, hide some of these panels if you don't want to see them. Um, and if if say you get something disorganize say this you, you're gonna need this tools panel and say you accidentally throw it off the screen somewhere and you can't see it basically all you need to do is click up here and click reset essentials and that'll put everything back to the way it was and I want to show you one more thing here um, so you know what I'm talking about when it comes to the layering panel over here on the right hand side you'll notice that I've got a background layer and um, you're always going to ha have a background layer. This is going to be something that's in the background unless you're working with something that's going to have a transparent background. Um, and then in that case instead of a white background here you're going to see these 
this checkered background and that's going to mean that anything in that area it will show up transparent depending on the format that you decide to save out your file in um, a PNG file for example will let you use a transparent background um, same goes for a, a GIF GIF file or um, there, there are other various file types a JPEG file will not let you use a transparent background um, so yeah, that's going to be more of an advanced tutorial that we uh, go through all that stuff. But um, just so you know, the the background layer is always going to be at the bottom. And then um, you'll notice this is like a hierarchy. So the next layer in line is the black rectangle and then the red rectangle. And you have the ability to move these layers. So let's let's move the red rectangle behind the black one and you'll notice it's back there but you can't necessarily see it because it's behind the black layer and the black layer is bigger than the red layer so if we wanted to just view to make sure it's back there we could just hide the black rectangle by clicking this little eyeball and you'll notice it's back there still um, and if we were to go save this file out right now it would save just the red rectangle on a white background. You know, if we want to move the red layer here, we're going to make sure it's selected. I'm going to hold the shift key down and that'll allow me to move it horizontally and keep it steady and straight. Um, I could do the same thing if I hold the shift key and click and drag vertically. That'll keep it straight on the vertical grid. Um, that's one way to make sure you're centered and, and you get lined up correctly. Um, let's go ahead and put it back in the middle. Um, one other thing we can do is highlight areas using this selection tool. I'm going to go ahead and Um, you'll notice that if I hold the shift key down while using this tool, it'll create a um, perfectly aligned square. Um, we can go ahead and go to layer, new fill, solid color, and I'm going to give it a yellow fill. That'll allow me to create a shape. If I want to duplicate this shape, it's as simple as making sure the yellow shape over here is um, f is still selected. If I hold the Alt key down, you'll notice the cursor changes. I can go ahead and simply drag it over to the other side. You'll notice that it, it created a copy, and it created a copy of the, the whole layer as well. And along with the layer, it asked what color I wanted to give the give it as a category. So um, I chose yellow. Um, basically, that's just the uh, the layer color for the the layer panel. So if we want to organize this um, uh, by color, we can just simply by right clicking and changing the category color. Um, so. Another thing we can do is say we want to get rid of the white in this picture. So if we want to get rid of the background, um, instead of just hiding it like that, if we want to actually make this picture smaller by cropping it, we're going to choose the crop tool and just drag each corner like so. Of course, we could drag the sides as well like so and then if we're happy with that we could hit the check mark if we're not happy we could cancel in this case I'm just gonna hit the check mark now if I want to select that color in the middle the the red color as the foreground color I could use the eyedropper tool and select it and you'll notice down here the foreground color is that red color if 
I was to simply left click on the yellow, it'll change the foreground color. But for now, I'm gonna make sure the foreground color is a blue. And then I'm gonna go up here to layer, new layer, layer, and I'm just gonna go ahead and let it, leave it as layer one. Um, that's gonna be the very top layer because I'm gonna use this paintbrush tool right here. And I'm going to go ahead and just start drawing. Okay, so there's a little smiley face. You'll notice there's, there's some tools up here that you can use. So um, if I hit this little down arrow, you'll notice there's different brushes that I can use. We can choose this brush. We can also, also change the sizes of the brushes. So um, there's a little outline of what the brush is gonna look like. You can also change the opacity, which if you just want say a very faint paint brush stroke. You can choose your brush, change the size, and you'll notice it'll just barely draw or use any paint. So now he's got some eyebrows. Um, now over on this right square, or I guess on the, the, the top layer here, let's right click on the brush and, and actually change the paint brush to the pencil tool you'll notice the pen, pencil tool is going to be a whole lot finer of a tool and thinner. Um, and say we want to give him a frown face instead of a smiley face, what we're going to do is go up to edit and undo. We could also hit control Z on the keyboard. So control Z. You'll notice the last thing I did is gone. Um, so now let's go ahead and give him a sad face. We can do the same thing with the pencil. We can change the the pencil type. Um, br pencils have brushes too in here, so you can change the size of it, like so. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's go ahead and hide all these layers here, um, except for the black one. Now, if I want to fill this with a different color other than black, I've got a couple options. I can either double click on the layer itself and choose a color. Say we choose a green here. Or, let's go ahead and hit Control Z to undo that. Or we can go to um, layer um, New fill layer and solid color. You'll notice if I do that, that actually creates a whole nother layer on top of this rectangle. So I basically created a new layer. Now there's another way we can give this layer color. If we just right click on the layer itself, we can go into the blending options and this is going to give us a whole list of different options we can do to this layer. Um, in this case we were going to go for a color change so um, we can either use the color overlay and then from there we can go even f deeper into it by clicking on cover lay overlay itself, clicking on the color and changing it here. And then you can change the opacity there. You can change several different options there as well. Um, but that's another way you can choose to give a layer color. Say we wanted to give it a gradient overlay, which is another pretty cool um, way to give something multiple colors at once, or a fade of colors. Basically, we would choose gradient overlay and by default it gives us this gray to black gradient. Now if we go into the gradient overlay options we can fine-tune this and, and give it a, a gradient at a specific angle, a specific op opacity, or we can change the scale of it. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna make it more harsh or, or less harsh based on this slider or we can choose specific values there as well. 
Um, what, what also is pretty cool with this, with, with the gradients, is you can change the, uh, the presets they give you. Um, one that I use quite a bit uh, is this one here. And let's go ahead and up, up the opacity here first. Cancel that opacity at 100%. Um, let's go back to that preset. Now this is this is one where it you can see it's got the yellow, red, blue, and then it fades in between. So if you wanted to go with say like a candy cane style, you could do something like that and hit OK. And say there's too much fade there if we want to make it more harsh or less harsh. We could also reverse it. So say it's going at this angle. I guess in that case it doesn't really reverse it since it's the same color on both sides, but uh, you can kind of tell what we're going for there. You can change the style. And then there's the diamond style. So there's all kinds of stuff you can do when you're changing colors and, and um, when you fine tune your, your layers options. Um, but let's go ahead and just hit OK here. And now let's go on to the next tool here. Um, if we right click on this here, we can also give it a gradient with the uh, gradient tool here on the left. Um, so this is similar to the gradient tool we were just using within the blending options, except it's right up here at the top. So you'll notice this is that uh, one of those diamond tools. This is similar to that uh, um, reflected gradient that we were using earlier. Here's that uh, diamond gradient. What we're going to do is just use this simple gradient and I'm going to use a transparent color on one side and then let's use, oh, let's change the foreground color to a, let's go with an aqua color and hit OK. Now if I want to, let's make sure we have the gradients turned off here. Now if I go back to this top layer, make sure it's selected, and unhide it. Now if I want to apply this gradient to this layer, I'm just going to start it down here at the bottom and then click and drag the left mouse key until where I want the gradient to stop. So you you can kind of get the idea of how you can use this to just, uh, let's go with a different color here. Um, you can just apply different tools together on top of each other to come up with cool patterns like so so that's one way you can use gradients um, next thing we're gonna do is go into the blur tool now this one it's gonna be a little hard to use this picture for specifically so let's pull up a different picture I'm gonna go ahead and um, go ahead and go to open and I'm gonna go ahead and open up this picture of this lion and one thing I want to note up here after I pulled this picture of this lion up you'll notice that the first image we were working on our first set of images um, is still open but it's over here on this toolbar so if I ever wanted to come back and work on this, I could. And then I could flip right back over to the lion as well. Um, and then there's a 
an X button right here if I just want to close it. And it's going to ask me, do I want to save changes? I'm going to go ahead and hit no here. And that's it. So now we only have, we're only working with the lion picture. Um, and it's a pretty high quality picture here. You'll notice down at the bottom, it's a 48 megabyte file and it's only at 25%. So if I want to zoom in to the, the lion's face here, um, I could just highlight where it says 25%, change this to say, let's go 75 and hit enter. That'll zoom us in pretty close to this lion's face. I don't want to get too close for now, but um, now we can use our blur tool and you'll notice that the right now the cursor is still pretty small. Um, that's going to be a little too small to work with right now. So let's just raise that size um, so it's big enough to start blurring some of the uh let's uh, let's see if we can blur some of these whiskers that'll be easy to see um i'm gonna leave the strength at 50. actually let's put the strength at a hundred percent for now and i'm just going to start clicking and holding the button down and you'll notice the whiskers are starting to go out of focus the more i blur them the harder it is to see them so now that we've blurred the cat's whiskers out, um, or the lion's whiskers, now what we're going to do is, let's just go ahead and reverse what we did. So I'm going to undo all that. And actually, we're going to need to do Alt-Control-Z. To return back all the way back to the beginning and I'm going to just zoom back out to where we were at 25% that way we can see the entire lion um, and for this next technique what we're going to use is the we're going to go back up to a tool that we've already used and let's go ahead and use the lasso tool um, Now, what I'm going to do is just cut out the line just by clicking once. Actually, you have to hold the left mouse button down all the way around this. I'm just going to try to get as close as possible to the outer layer of the lion you'll see what we're gonna do here in a second after we cut them out go up here to the left side and then we're gonna connect it right where we started there now I'm gonna go up here to refine edges This is going to help me get a f finer cut. Now, every picture is going to be a little different when it comes to this. So it's going to take a little tweaking. That's actually pretty good right there. And I'm going to hit OK. So what this is doing is it's going to cut out. And actually, it's going to first it's going to select the areas that we're cutting out right now. So they're selected. Now if I right click and do layer via copy, that actually copied that layer so that layer of the line that we cut out so actually right now if I was to go back up to the move tool and move this copy 
it would appear as if it's its own layer. And then what I can do is go up to edit, transform and flip uh, horizontally. And I could flip it around. So now it looks like there's two lions facing off against each other. And then you'll notice there's a few little pieces of grass or bushes up there. And what we could do is make sure that layer is highlighted. Come up here to the eraser tool. Um, I could even zoom in further if I wanted to get real close. and simply erase that stuff that we don't want. Now, if I was really trying to get real detailed with it, I'd probably do something like this too. Just cut off some of those jagged edges. Anyway, that's how you would cut out an image and um, basically reverse it. Um, and if I wanted to migrate this or merge these two layers, what I could do is just right click on the background layer and go to flatten image, either flatten image or I could go to merge visible. So that would merge them into one layer. So now if I go up to the move tool, I can't necessarily move it because the layer is already uh, locked to the background. Um, so now we can't really do anything with that second layer unless we hit back or undo and undid that step. Um, now one thing I can do with this layer now that it's separated on its own is I can right click on it and go into blending options and I'll show you some of these layering options we have. We could give it a drop shadow um, that's just one thing we could do. We could give it a stroke which is more of like a border. And we have some opacity, opacity levels that we could give it. Um, we could give it a gradient, which is kind of like something we went over earlier. Now, say we wanted to make this lion like a, like a white lion. Um, what we could do is go to cover o color overlay. Um, choose the color white and then change this to screen and then we would need to lower the opacity actually let's try like one of these other settings screen doesn't work too well with that oh that actually looks pretty cool right there using difference Basically, it, it gives it a polar uh, negative in color. That actually looks really cool. But anyway, that's how you would apply um, blending options. You could also give it a bevel. Yeah, let's go back to that uh, difference. remove the bevel. But yeah, there's all kinds of different features you could give it uh, just based on the fact that it's separated out in its own layer. Let's merge these down to one photo again. And then let's add some text. So to do that, I'm going to choose the T or the text tool. I'm going to change the font to Arial Black, which is the most bold that you can get. Um, 
And then we want it to be fairly big, so let's actually go ahead and change that 60 to, let's go with a 90. Let's change the color picker tool to white. And I'm just gonna start typing here. Since it's not fitting on there, what I could do is just keep typing, or I could hit enter and type on the next line. Now, one thing I want to do here is I want to bring this text up closer to the text above it. So to do that, what I'm going to do is highlight all of the text and then choose this, what's called the character and paragraph panel. That's gonna open up some more text options. And the fact that I have the both lines highlighted, now that I've, did, I've done that, I can drag this little bar up. What I'm doing is just clicking where this little A and, and arrow is and then I'm just dragging left and right and that's allowing me to adjust the separation between the two lines um, I can also do the same thing with these other settings here is I can I can make the, the text wider or skinnier or even the height I can make it taller vertically so that's pretty cool when it comes to text. You can edit the text without um, inhibiting your ability to actually type. So if I made an error in spelling, which it looks like I, I already did make an error, I, I forgot to put of. So, you know, I could hit spacebar, add the of. And that allows me to uh, finish off the text. And I could also go back to my move tool and move it to wherever I need it. If I want to add the uh, italic feature, I can do that. Now, one thing I like to do with text is I like to give it a... Uh, either a background, a border, or, or uh, shadows. So to do that, what I normally do is right click on the text layer and go to blending options. Um, you could give it a stroke if you wanted to. That, that'll kind of separate it from the background um, or a, a drop shadow. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and leave the opacity at 75. I'm going to change the distance to, let's say, let's go with close to 20 and then just move the spread and size just a little bit. See, that kind of separates the background from the text itself, so it kind of pops a little bit better. Um, another thing I might do is um, raise the opacity on that and maybe the spread a little bit more. And you'll notice if we give it more size, you can actually blend the background in so it's not as noticeable too. Another thing you might find is useful when applying text like this to a lighter background. Um, let's go ahead and turn those effects off by hitting the little eyeball here. One other thing we could do is go back up to our brush tool, leave the opacity like around 25%, and let's see what brush size we can get here let's go with like a fade brush make sure we choose our background layer and go with a, a bigger brush and what I'm gonna do is go with I'm gonna pull a color from the background by using the eyedropper tool um, so something dark let's go with like a dark brown here this will be perfect and Oh, that brush size is way too big. 
yeah let's go with like that size brush but while the back while on the background layer let's just go ahead and click around down here see instead of giving it a drop shadow I'm basically painting on a color and it's it looks natural since it came from the background so that's one other way you can kind of get your text to pop out of pictures and, and make it look somewhat you know natural and professional so I think this is pretty much gonna do it for this video guys um, appreciate you guys sticking around and watching the, the entire video I know it's pretty long but uh, hopefully I could pack everything that we needed into this this one video for the beginners um, if you guys have any questions please feel free to leave those in the comments um, also make sure you um, let me know what you guys want to see in the future what things that I can change um, I know I'm still pretty new to this so hopefully I uh, pick up the quality and things just get better and better as we go um, but anyway um, like I said subscribe make sure you help me out um, and I'll plan on uh, being around in the future. So thanks again, guys. Have a great day. Bye.